This is Lecture Note 12, Monopolistic Competition, which covers a third market structure, blending some of the intuition from perfect competition and monopoly together to some interesting conclusions. I include a collection of references I use while creating my notes. This includes our text and many others. You're not actually responsible for the content of these other texts, of course. We'll think about monopolistic competition, distinguish between other market structures. We'll think about profit maximizing in the long and short run, access capacity, and advertising. So monopolistic competition is a situation that can arise when we have many firms competing in a market with related but not identical products. Firms want to create something similar to a monopoly by reducing the number of closed substitutes. And this is done by differentiating one's own product. So now we're thinking of a market structure with a collection of firms, each with some degree of localized market power. They're monopolists for their specific product niche. We also assume free entry and free exit. This gives us the implication that economic profits are zero in the long run. But that's sort of weird because firms still have market power. So let's take a closer look. We're thinking of a situation where firms affect the price of their own product, but not the average market price. Each firm considers the actions of its rivals jointly, but not individually. So we want to rule out the possibility for collusion. There's too many firms for collusion for, to successfully raise prices. Collusion would be possible in a different market structure called oligopoly that's related to monopolistic competition, but that's different because with oligopoly, firms care about the strategies of their rivals. That's not what happens here. We're only assuming rival strategies matter jointly. Oligopoly is the natural extension of a monopoly to a few firms. Monopolistic competition is extending market power to many firms. Monopolistic competition differs from monopoly in that while each firm still faces the downward sloping demand curve, each firm also has to deal with other firms in the market. So there's no meaningful barriers to entry. The profit maximizing decision looks just like an ordinary monopoly. Since the firm faces downward sloping demand, its marginal revenue curve lies everywhere below the demand curve. Hence, it sets a price above marginal revenue when determining the MR equals MC output level. So here's a picture, a monopolistically competitive firm with an economic profit. Here's a picture of a monopolistically competitive firm with an economic loss. In the short run, monopolistically competitive firms may earn positive economic profits, but that's not sustainable as rivals will enter the product niche to compete away profits. Firms that are making losses, of course, will exit in the long run. The long run monopolistic competition equilibrium involves an output where the optimal quantity from the MR equals MC decision also corresponds to where the demand curve crosses the average total cost curve. So this is where MR equals MC and P is equal to ATC. Marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and price is equal to average total cost. So this result is a little bit strange. We have elements from both monopoly and competition. Firms earn zero economic profit in the long run but charge a price that exceeds the marginal cost of producing that good. Since price exceeds marginal cost, we know that the monopolistically competitive market produces fewer units than socially optimal. There are foregone units for which consumers would have been willing to pay more than production costs. Firms have control over their own price, but not to the extent that they can do much more than recover their own opportunity costs. So in the long run, economic profit is zero. We expect no further entry or exit. Now we can reflect on a comparison between monopolistic competition and perfect competition more carefully. We, set a price above, we get a price above marginal cost, a quantity below the optimal quantity. We know a perfectly competitive firm faces elastic demand coinciding with its marginal revenue curve, so the competitive firm produces where price is equal to marginal cost. The long run competitive equilibrium occurs where average total cost is at a minimum, but this is, but this is an allocatively and productively efficient outcome. Here's the picture for the long-run competitive equilibrium. Now, the monopolistically competitive firm produces where price exceeds marginal cost. And in the long-run equilibrium, average total cost is not minimized. So there's inefficiency introduced by monopolistic competition. Here's the picture for the long-run equilibrium given monopolistic competition. We see there's excess capacity in the sense that there's a gap between the output produced and the output that minimizes average total cost. 
If the monopolistically competitive firm was to increase its output, it would produce at a lower average cost. Its efficient scale is where average total cost is at a minimum. So access capacity is the amount by which the efficient scale is larger than the quantity produced. A monopolistically competitive firm produces where price is bigger than marginal cost. This difference, price minus marginal cost, is called markup, the amount by which price exceeds marginal cost. There's also an associated deadweight loss. But it's not obvious that consumers must be worse off. They might not be, in fact. A downward sloping demand curve is the main difference graphically between the individual firms in perfect competition and monopolistic competition. This downward sloping demand is due to product differentiation. However, firms choose to differentiate their products to match consumer preferences. Indeed, maybe consumers are better off with differentiation than without all things considered. On the other hand, this product variety is costly. The efficient amount of profit variety, product variety is where the willingness to pay for product variety equals the marginal cost of product variety. The willingness to pay for an additional unit of a given variety may exceed the marginal cost, but this loss might be offset by the presence of additional product variety. So compared to the average total product, uniformly monopolistic, so compared to the alternative of total product uniformity, monopolistic competition is inefficient. But that might not be the right comparison. Now the only reason why firms can control price is because consumers believe their products are different. Demand's more elastic when there's many close substitutes and less elastic when there's fewer substitutes. Increasing the level of differentiation makes demand faced more inelastic. In order to achieve these levels of product differentiation in the minds of consumers, the firm will use advertising. One goal is to argue that a particular product is superior and the possible substitutes are actually pretty poor alternatives. Firms also focus on niche marketing, designing products to fill particular needs in the market. So here we covered monopolistic competition, comparison to other market structures, profit maximization, excess capacity, and advertising.